Hello everyone and welcome to our new track AI tutorial in which you will learn how to create a cigarette detector with visual and sound warning like this. Alright, now let's get started. First, open this page in the new track repository on GitHub. Then make sure that your software and hardware meet the requirements. Check the operating system. As for the hardware, you'll need an RGBD sensor and a CUDA compatible GPU, that is NVIDIA 1050 Ti or better. You will also need to download CUDA 9.0, select Windows, version, installer type, and click download. After the download, install the software. Alright, now we need to download the CU DNN 7 library. Select the version for CUDA 9.0 that we've just downloaded. The latest version is from November 2019. Select the operating system Windows 10. After the download, open the archive. Then open the folder with the installed CUDA. And replace the folders from the corresponding with the corresponding folders from the archive. Alright, we've added the necessary files. To enable object detection, we need to open the notrack.config file and replace the values in several fields. First, find the skeletonization type field and replace the value uh, to a different skeleton tracking algorithm. Then, turn on depth to color registration. And turn on the object detection. All right. We've done with the preparations for this project. To check the AI tracking, you can open the new track activation tool. And click test. Select the device, enter the key, check all the boxes, click test. We can see the skeleton tracking, face tracking and object detection. Next, we open Unity, create a new project, import the Unitrack SDK Unity package by double click, import all the files except for the Oculus Rift project because it's just too big. Go to NewTrack SDK, Tutorials, current tutorial called NewTrack AI. You could see there are some errors, but they're not critical. Just restart Unity and they will disappear. Right, we've opened the NewTrack AI tutorial, so what will happen in this project? We'll display an RGB image from a camera. And if there is a cigarette on the screen, there will be a warning message and a signal. In the tutorial folder, we have this signal, the prefab of the frame, which will outline each object found on the scene, and as well as a folder with final assets, which we need to delete now because we're going to create this project from scratch. 
create a new scene and call it cigarette warning. Add the InnoTrack script prefab to this scene to link the InnoTrack modules. We will also add a prefab from the tutorial called Tracking Skeletons on RGB. To display the image from the camera. Here the image will be displayed. Create an object and call it object detector. Then create a canvas for our warning. Create an empty image on it. Make it red, stretch it to the full screen and add transparency. Rename it to warning image and also add the text. Double the size and increase the font size. Click center line and anchor it on the top. Since we now have two canvases, one with an image and one with a warning, we have to make sure that the warning is displayed over the image. To do this, the sort order of the second canvas should be greater than the sort order of the first one. So this one has zero, so we need to set this one to one. Then create a new C-sharp script, let's call it Object Detector. Open the script, delete the comments, then add the library for working with an interface. Next, we add a field for the warning screen, then a field for the sound source, then a variable that specifies how long the object must be on the screen to turn on the warning. And we need that to avoid accidental triggers. Uh, by default, this is a third of a second. Then we add a field uh, for the canvas. Uh, in this canvas, uh, the frames with detected objects will be displayed. This is our second canvas. Next, we add a field for our frames that show detected objects. Add a field with the number of such frames. By default, it is 10. and then create the JSON variable. We also create a list of frames that are already on the scene. Create an array um, in which we will store the objects that are detected in the current frame. Since the information from JSON is received in raw format, the data in this variable will be stored in a more convenient form. Then create a variable for calculating the period of cigarette detection. As soon as this period exceeds the limit that we set, the warning message no smoking will pop out. Create a flag that will change uh, when a cigarette is detected. Next, uh, go to the start method. At the start of the scene, we need to add the specified number of frames to the scene. We'll add them in a loop. So using this code, we add frames to the scene and make them children of the canvas. We also add this object to the list with frames. Then go to the update method and using one of the new track methods, uh, we get the current JSON file. 
which contains all the detected objects, and pass it to the JSON variable. Then we convert all this from the raw JSON format into a more convenient form to the object info variable of the JSON info class. Unnecessary symbols in this raw JSON are empty square brackets and empty quotation marks. Next, we add all the detected objects from JSON to the objects array. Set the cigarette detected flag to false. If a cigarette is found, it will change to true. Then we create a loop in which we will iterate through our frames, add the conditions if there are objects on the screen and there is an object for the current frame and this object is not a human, uh, then a frame for this object will be displayed. If all the conditions are met, we turn on this frame on the scene. Uh, then let's create a variable in which we will store the frame width. The width that we get from JSON is normalized, so its value is from 0 to 1. To convert this into a screen form, let's multiply it by the screen width. The same is applied to the frame height. We also do the same thing with the X, X position and Y position. Set the position of the frame. Then we create a two-dimensional vector with the X and Y positions. We need to shift this to the half screen. To improve the accuracy, we need to shift by half frame width. We do the same with the Y position, but it should be mirrored. Set the frame size. We also create a two-dimensional vector, which will fit into the pre-calculated width and height. Then we get the text component for this frame and enter the class name of the detected object in it. Then we check if the object class is cigarette. Then we set the cigarette detected flag to true. If we have a human class in the pile of frames that we sort through, we do not outline the human class with the frame, then we hide this frame. If a cigarette was detected, we add time to the timer. If no cigarette was detected, we reset the timer. If the time has become equal to the minimum limit that we specified, then we turn on the alarm sound and display a warning screen. If there is no cigarette, we do not turn on the alarm sound and hide the screen. Alright, we are done with the code. Go back to the scene, hide the warning, go to the object detector, add the script with the same name to this object, add the frame that we're, we've already prepared, then set the canvas of the object detector and the audio source component. Uncheck the box play on awake and add a warning sound to it. Now we add this configured audio source to the field of the object detector. Finally, we add our red screen with a warning. Make sure that RGB and skeleton tracking are turned on. Turn off the objects that will interact with new track, that are object detector and color frame canvas. 
we will turn them on after the start of new track. To do this, double click plus, drag and drop frame canvas to the first field, and set what will happen after the start of new track. It will turn on. The same is applied to the object detector. All right, save the project. And run it. Alright, now you have a cigarette detector that you can use to easily catch all the smokers in your area. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!